As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Hey friend, this is Rick Renner and I've been waiting for you. Today we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. We're talking about the coming of the Antichrist. You say the coming of the Antichrist. What about Jesus? Isn't he coming first? Yes, he is. And I'm believing that Jesus is going to come in our lifetime in the not so distant future. But as soon as the church is evacuated, somebody called the Antichrist is going to step onto the stage in front of the whole world. And that's why I'm teaching my series called The Coming of the Antichrist. It's 10 parts. It comes in multiple formats. We need to know what the Bible says. If you don't know what the Bible says, then you're susceptible to all kinds of things you hear on the internet or what one person says or another person says, and it can just shake you all the time. But you need to know what the Bible says. You may ask, well, is the Antichrist in the world today? Probably, but his identity will not be revealed until we're out of here, so just calm down Everything is going to be all right, but you need to know what the Bible says because the teaching of the Bible will give you peace and a surety. Anyway, it's a 10-part series, and it comes with a marvelous study guide. I think you know by now I love the study guides. I think they are like a banquet of revelation and information, and these two together will be such a blessing to you. And I'm really excited about my brand new book. Please order it. You say, well, what is it? It's called Last Days Survival Guide. Hey, we're living in the last days. In fact, we're not just living in the last days. We're living in the very, very last of the last days. And the Bible says a lot to those who will live in the very, very last of the last days. This entire book is based on 2 Timothy chapter 3, where the Holy Spirit says, know this also, know this, know this, know this. And he then emphatically, categorically, begins to describe things we need to know. He wasn't trying to scare us. He was trying to equip us and prepare us. And he began to give us information we needed to know so we could circumvent the attacks of the devil in the end of the age, which means if we'll pay attention to what God said, we can protect our families, our finances, we can protect our health, we can protect our church, our kids, our grandkids, but we need to know how. And I put it all in this book called Last Day's Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. And the foreword is written by... Perry Stone, whom I respect so much. He is so brilliant. Anyway, this is a book that you will really be glad you ordered, and I want to encourage you to order one or two or maybe more, because you will definitely reorder anyway. This is a book you're going to want to share with someone else. You can order by going online right now, or just call us to place your order. And when you call, remember that if you need prayer, tell us how to pray for you, or you can write us as soon as your email shows up in our inbox, we're going to begin to put our faith together with you. There are people all over the world that can testify when they call our ministry. They really met a voice who met them with power and with prayer and God moved. And we'll believe for God to move with you as well. And if you're not a partner, please become a partner with our ministry. At least consider it when you become a partner right from the comfort of your own home you can make a difference in somebody else's life. Oh, God wants to use you to change somebody's life. You may have even prayed, God, please use me. Well, here's a way that God can use you. By making a monthly contribution to our ministry, you empower us to take this teaching, the same teaching that you were enjoying. It can go to somebody else because of a click of the button on your computer or a simple phone call. And with a simple click or call, you can change somebody else's life. And when you become a partner, we immediately send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness. That's part of the welcome package. And we also send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone. You will love these books 
Anyway, please pray about joining us as a partner. But reach for your Bible today. We're going to return to our subject of the coming of the Antichrist. I've got my Bible and I've got my notes. And today we're going to return to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And today we're going to begin in verse 3. And when we come to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, the Apostle Paul is describing end-time events. And when we come to verse 3, he's really trying to calm down the church in Thessalonica because they've been listening to bad prophecy teaching that has really shaken them. In fact, someone has told them that Jesus already came, the rapture already occurred, and they missed it, and now they were living in the tribulation. Well, that upset them just like it would upset you. So now Paul writes to them and listen to what he says in verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. The word no man is so strong that it really implies whoever was misleading them may have been somebody they really respected. But Paul says, nonetheless, let no man, it doesn't matter who it is, it doesn't matter whose voice it is, if they're teaching wrong, don't let them deceive you. The word deceive is a Greek word which means to cheat. Do you know you can be spiritually cheated? It means to be seduced, to take advantage of by trickery, to deceive by giving distorted impressions or to lure into deception or to use any means possible to promote delusional thinking and delusional believing. It may be that those who were teaching were very sincere, but they were wrong. And because they were teaching wrongly, it was upsetting the hearers. And Paul says, don't let anybody feed you delusional information. Keep your head on straight. For that day, he's talking about the rapture, that day will not come except there come a falling away first. Now, I've told you in previous programs that the words falling away is a translation of the Greek word apostasia. This is very important. It's a compound of two words. The word apo means away. The word stasis means to stand. When you compound the two words together, it forms the word apostasia, which means a revolt, a rebellion, or a mutiny. Now, some people today try to convolute this to describe the rapture. It is not the rapture of the church. You just cannot make that word mean the rapture of the church. This word historically, apostasia, describes a revolt. Plutarch used it to describe a political mutiny, a revolt. It's used even in Joshua 22, verse 22 in the Old Testament to describe a rebellion against the Lord. But in this verse, Paul prophesies a worldwide mutiny. It's not a revolt in the church. That's going to happen too. But it is a worldwide mutinous attitude when the world at the very end of the age will begin to throw off the standards of the Word of God. And the Apostle Paul says, before the rapture occurs, first, there's going to be a mutinous attitude that's going to develop in the world toward God. And Paul uses the word first here, a falling away first. The word first is the Greek word proton, which means first in order, first in sequence of events. This will occur first before that day comes. And then he says, oh, listen to this. He says, then the man of sin will be revealed. The word sin, the Greek word anomia, which describes one who has thrown off law, one who no longer wants to live by past standards, and particularly it refers to the law of God. The man of sin, then Paul goes on to describe him as the son of perdition, the word perdition, the Greek word apoleia, it describes anything rotten, decaying, filled with stench. And as I told you, it is the same word that would be used to describe meat filled with maggots. Oh, it's so disgusting. Which means the Antichrist, who will portray himself as a progressive thinker, leaving the world into a new age, free from the outdated voice of the Bible, a new world with new standards, framing a new world order. In fact, everything he touches will be filled with rottenness and decay. That's why the Bible calls him the son of destruction, the son of doom and destruction, the son of perdition. But wait. Then you go to the following verse, verse 4, where Paul says, Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God 
or that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We've seen that the word opposeth is the Greek word anti kami. It describes one that is opposed to everything that was previously established. He will try to wipe out all past norms, and he will exalt himself. This word exalt means to highly exalt, to, high, to highly exalt above all that is called God. The word above, the Greek word epi, it describes a superior position. He'll take a superior position above all. The word all is a Greek word panty. It literally means everything that is being called God or that is worshipped as divine, which means he will exalt himself above all world religions, particularly against Christianity. It's why he's called the Antichrist. He'll be against Christ. And the Bible says he will actually sit in the temple. The word sit, the Greek word kathidza, which means to sit permanently or to really take a permanent position in a seat. He'll sit in the temple. The word temple here, the Greek word naos, the very word used in the Old Testament Septuagint to describe the Holy of Holies, which implies he will enter into a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem and will walk into the Holy of Holies and be seated there. And the Bible says, showing himself that he is God, the word showing the Greek word apodeknumi, which is used particularly in the New Testament to describe signs and wonders or supernatural activity, which means the Antichrist will be demonically energized and he will come with lying signs and wonders. You're going to see that in coming programs. But hold on. Listen to how I would translate verse 4. Here's the RIV. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I'm describing that person who will be so against God and everything connected with the worship of God that if you can imagine it, he will even try to put himself on a pedestal above God himself, sitting in God's rightful place in the temple and proclaiming himself to be God. And then in verse 5, Paul said to the Thessalonians, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you all these things? So now he's reminding them of what he had previously taught them when he was there with them. Then in verse 6, he says, and now, the word now is the Greek word noon. At this very precise moment, right now exactly, you know what withholdeth that he, the word he refers to the Antichrist, this son of perdition, what withholdeth that the Antichrist might eventually be revealed in his time. The word withholdeth is the Greek word katecho. The word katecho means to hold back, to suppress, to restrain, or to hinder. And therefore, some theologically call this the great restrainer or the great hinderer or the one that withholdeth. Who is it? Well, I've already told you I believe it's the church. We're going to review that again in just a moment. But there is a supernatural force that God has set in the earth a force that is so strong that it is currently holding back the manifestation of the Antichrist. It tells us that he must be held back. He must be suppressed. He must be hindered or he'll quickly come. But there is an invisible force of some kind that is holding him back. This great restrainer is stalling. It delays and postpones the manifestation of this evil person. And Paul says he will eventually be revealed in his time. When will he be revealed? When the restrainer is removed. You're going to see that next. But wait, in this verse it says that he might be revealed. There's going to be a moment when there will be a great revealing, the Bible says, in the Antichrist's time. The word time, the Greek word kairos, it describes a season. It is also the Greek word for an opportunity, which means the Antichrist will be an opportunist. He'll see his season. He'll seize the opportunity. And when the moment is right, he'll be revealed. The word revealed, the Greek word apokalupsis, which means to uncover. It's there all the time, but you can't see it to reveal or to unveil something that has been veiled or hidden, but suddenly it becomes clear and visible to see a sudden revealing. When the veil is removed, what was hidden suddenly comes into plain view. 
What is behind the veil is no longer concealed or hidden from private or public view. Suddenly the curtains will open and there on the stage will be this man whom Satan has prepared to lead the world into a new age during the great tribulation. And the Bible says he will be revealed in his time. I would translate verse 6 like this. Now, in light of everything I've told you before, you ought to be well aware by now there is a supernatural force at work that is preventing the materialization of this person and the disclosure of his identity. This restraining force I'm referring to is so strong that it is currently putting on the brakes and holding back the unveiling of this wicked person, stalling and postponing his manifestation. But when the right moment comes, this evil one will no longer be withheld and he will emerge on the world scene. The screen that has been hiding his true identity and guarding him from worldview will suddenly be pulled back and evaporate and he will step out on center stage, stage to let everyone know who he is. That is the RIV of verse 6. Then in verse 7, Paul continues, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Wait, here we come. Who is the one that is letting, that will let until he be taken out of the way? I realize that's a lot of old King James English, so I'm going to clear it up for you in this program. Wait, let's begin at the very first of the verse. For the mystery of iniquity. The word mystery is the Greek word musterion. It's a very Greek, Greek, Greek word. A musterion, a mystery, was something that was held in the hands of just a few. You had to be initiated into their circle, their inner circle or their inner sanctum, to have access to this very limited information. It really describes something that is hidden or even a secret plan, a secret plan. But wait. Here in this verse, it's called the secret plan of iniquity. I have to pause on this word iniquity. It again is the Greek word anomia. The word anomia keeps appearing in this text over and over and over. Sometimes it's translated as the word wicked. Sometimes it's translated as the word sin. Here it's translated as the word iniquity. But in every case, in this text, it is the word anomia, nomos, is the Greek word for law. But if you put an A on the front, it's no longer nomos, it becomes anomia. The A cancels nomos. It's a world which once had law, but now it has walked out of that. It has thrown off the old standards, the old modes. It's thrown off the outdated voice of the Bible. And now it has become anomia, free of all those past voices, free of all those past standards. And here it is used prophetically to depict a last day's society that will throw out all previously agreed upon morals and standards and depart from God's law at the very end of the age. Wow. The Bible is telling us that as part of a last day's scheme, society will construct a new world that has few, if any, hard and fast rules of what is morally right and wrong. That is why the Bible says it will be a lawless world. Lawless doesn't mean chaotic. It doesn't even necessarily mean a world full of rioting, though we see a lot of that these days. It describes a world that has thrown off the shackles of the voice of God and the voice of the Bible. The current trend toward lawlessness in the world today, that is the construction of a new world order with morals contrary to those stated in the Bible will eventually produce a worldwide collective mindset that no longer lives by what is prescribed in the Bible. It will be a lawless world or a world filled with iniquity and that's what the verse here describes. And the Apostle Paul in this verse says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. The word already means already right now at this present moment. So Paul recognized even in his time, this secret plan to modify the world was already put into action. In fact, Paul says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. The word work, the Greek word energeo, listen to this. 
It describes something that is being energized to fulfillment, something that's being energized and executed, or it depicts a force that is propelling something forward and facilitating all the way to its conclusion. And Paul says there is really a conspiracy at work. Today, people talk a lot about conspiracies. Well, there really is a conspiracy that's at work today, but it's been at work for 2,000 years. The devil has been working to modify the world, to change the world, until finally it will become so lawless, it will be primed and prepared to embrace a man of lawlessness. That will be the Antichrist. But Paul says, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The word only, the Greek word monon, this word monon means alone. Here is the one thing that is stopping it right now. Only he who now, the word now, is the Greek word which means right now in this immediate moment. So even in the first century, the great restrainer was at work. So whoever the great restrainer is, he was also in the first century. He'll also be in the world at the end of the age. It's the church. We know that because he continues to say, letteth and will let. The word letteth, the Greek word katako. The great restrainer is one that is postponing, stalling, hindering, restraining, and will let all the way to the end of the church age, whoever the great restrainer is, will continue to let, will continue to postpone, hold back, stall, delay, restrain, hinder the manifestation of evil and this evil one until, the word until even is important, the Greek word heus, until that precise moment when he be taken out of the way. When the Bible says be taken, be taken is a form of the Greek word again, oh my, which describes something that takes place unexpectedly, suddenly, or by surprise. Here is describing the rapture of the church, which is going to be very sudden in the twinkling of an eye. And the Bible says, until he be taken out of the way, out of the way in Greek is ek meso. It means out of the middle of everything. Well, right now the church is in the middle of everything, but a day is coming when we're going to be removed. And I would translate verse 7 like this. These events have been covertly in the making for a long time, but the world doesn't realize that a secret plan is being executed right under their own noses. The only thing that has kept this plan from already being consummated is the supernatural force, that's us, that's been holding it back until now. But one day this force will be removed from the picture. And when that happens, these events will quickly transpire. And verse 8 says, and then... The word then is a Greek word, to say, then at that precise moment with no delay, that wicked shall be revealed. In Greek, that wicked is ho anomas. The word, it really means the very wicked one. The one who is the very epitome of wickedness himself, he will be revealed or he will suddenly step out onto the stage. And verse 8 tells us he will be obliterated when Jesus comes at the end of the seven-year tribulation. That's what it says in verse 8. And then that wicked one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth and will destroy with the brightness of his coming. Wow, that is so powerful. The word consume is a Greek word which means to kill, to murder, to slay to do away with, to abolish, to totally liquidate. The Lord will consume him, slay him, annihilate him with the spirit of his mouth. The word spirit is a Greek word, pneumati. A better translation would be with one puff from his mouth. That is how powerful is the word of God when it comes out of the mouth of Jesus. Here the Antichrist will be ruling the world for seven years, setting the temple, showing himself that he is God with demonic, supernatural, lying signs and wonders, captivating the world, enslaving the world with perdition, rot, and destruction. But when Jesus shows up, just one puff from his mouth will put this man out of operation. And that's why the verse goes on to say, and shall destroy. The word destroy, the Greek word, Katargeo, to abolish, to put to an end, to bring to a conclusion, will destroy with the brightness of his coming. The word brightness, the Greek word epiphania, it's where we get the word for an epiphany. 
for the Antichrist, this is going to be an epiphany moment when, wow, he wakes up and says, whoa, what is this? Jesus shows up. It's going to be an epiphany for the Antichrist because it is his end. And the Bible says, with the brightness of his coming, the word coming, the Greek word parousia, a technical expression to describe the arrival of a king or a sovereign who has come with all the power, might, and authority to put everything in order. At the end of the seven-year tribulation, Jesus will come. And at that moment, it will be an epiphany for the Antichrist because he's going to wake up to the fact that his rule is over with one puff from Jesus' mouth. Jesus will obliterate him, and Jesus will begin to put everything back in order as he initiates the millennial reign. Now, that's a lot in one program, but we're not done. When we come back in the next program, we're going to pick up right here. But in just a moment, I'll be back, and I want to pray for you. People often talk about the coming of Jesus, but once Jesus has raptured the church, the Bible says the Antichrist will be revealed to the world. In one split second, the Antichrist will come out of hiding and go public. In the 10-part series, The Coming of the Antichrist, Rick Renner delves into this end time subject like you've never heard it before. Based on 1 Thessalonians, Rick explores verses that can be difficult making them easy to understand. Since we are living in the end of the ages, we need to know what is coming in the near future. If you are interested in what the Bible says about the future, then this is one series you need to digest. Rick answers, who is the Antichrist? What will he be like when he shows up? When will he be revealed to the world? What is stopping him from being revealed right now? Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20, you'll be so glad you invested in this powerful series. In addition, you can order Rick Renner's book, Last Day Survival Guide. This spectacular book will awaken you to the times we are living in and will equip you to sail through these times successfully. We are in the last days. You and I need to know how to thrive in this last day's environment. This is one book you must have. Right now, you can get Last Day Survival Guide for just $25 wherever books are sold, in stores and online, or by going to renner.org. Don't delay ordering your copy today. And don't miss this powerful teaching series. Call the number on your screen now or go online to order. You know, when I was a teenager, we used to sing a song called Soon and Very Soon, We Are Going to See the King. And my friends, Jesus is coming soon. And when Jesus comes, he's going to take the church. And then at the end of seven years, we're going to come back with him. He's coming with 10,000s of his saints. That's you and me. And in that moment, Jesus is going to put everything into order. Anyway, all of this is in my brand new series called The Coming of the Antichrist, which comes with a great study guide. And I want you to be sure to order my brand new book called Last Days Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. But Father, I thank you that your word is so powerful that with just one puff from your mouth, you will obliterate evil. Thank you for the power of your word in our life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Oh, I can hardly wait for tomorrow. I'll see you then. God bless you. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you enjoyed this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.